Hello everyone, Trophy100, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing an interesting video. This is not really scheduled, I just thought this would be neat. I'm going over to a friend's house, they're going to serve up some prime ribs. So I thought what would be nice with that, I recently someone gave me a bottle of the Judge. And I thought, oh I'd like to taste this wine, I don't usually buy BC wine. So that's great that I got this wine and then I thought, well I'll take something out of my cellar that's comparative and let's see how it goes. Let's talk about the wines. So the first wine is the Judge 2020 from the Hester Creek Winery. This is a local BC winery which is now currently owned by uh, Curtis Garland. Um, so the original winery was started in the 1980s by a person called Joe Busnardo and under the name Divino Estate. It was sold in 1996 and then renamed to Hester Creek Winery and then purchased by the current owner um, Curtis Garland in 2004. It's a blend wine and so the mix for the 2020 vintage was 35% Merlot, 34% Cabernet Franc, 28% Cabernet Sauvignon, 2% Petit Verdot and 1% Malbec. It's aged 24 months in French oak barrels and it does have a quite a um, high alcohol content, 14%. So we'll have to watch that and see if that affects the flavors. Um, the This is kind of their premium wine, one of their premium wines. And the grapes are taken from some of the oldest vines on the property, which go back to um, 1968. And for those who are not familiar with BC wines, so the history of BC wines I guess it, when they started back, I, I, I would guess in the 60s or 70s, it was more um, kind of uh, localized grapes and in fact a lot of German varietals um, that people used to um, look at here, much like the Alsace region. But I guess with uh, the times, people tried to trend with what more North American trends. You saw more people growing Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, Merlot. Um, and again, I'm no expert in these things, but I think the trend now to go away from those um, brand, those varietals is a good one. I actually personally believe that the Pinot Noir grape and the Chardonnay grape go quite well here. Probably the Merlot does well also. And this interesting Cabernet Franc, which I think BC is one of the few places in the world that actually can grow Cabernet Franc pretty decently. And, uh, a lot of wineries um, do have a bit of a blend of Cabernet Franc, so it's quite interesting. Now let's go over to the other wine that I'm going to comparatively taste against. And again, I don't want to make it's a comparative tasting, but it's not. I don't like uh, the idea of like the judge versus Chateau Oliver. It's more just comparative. There's no winner. There's no loser. There's no better. There's no worse. It's more just it's interesting to compare the wines uh, and without real a judgment like a winner. I don't like the idea of a winner or a loser in terms of wines. That's not um, kind of how I feel about wines. It's just a different taste. You can have different taste preferences and just note the differences in my opinion. Um, so Chateau Olivier, this is one of the oldest wineries in Bordeaux and I think it dates back to I think the 1100s or something like that. So it is a rank, a cru classe wine in the Grave region and um, the Grave region classification was done in 1953 and then again in 1959. So there are certain wineries that are ranked. There's only about 20 of them and Chateau Olivier is actually ranked for both red and white wines. It's been owned by the uh, de Berthman family since the early 20th century and the Vineyard is planted 58% Merlot, 40% Cabernet Sauvignon, and 2% Petit Verdot. Formerly they had about 10% Cabernet Franc, but they've removed that from the mix. This is the 2018 vintage, and the blend in the 2018 vintage was 50% Cabernet Sauvignon, 46% Merlot, and 4% Petit Verdot. It's aged 30% in new oak for 12 to 14 months. And why I chose to put these two together, I thought um, I looked through my cellar, so at first I really wanted to try the, the Hester Creek that someone gave to me. Really nice looking bottle, first of all. And I haven't drank um, Hester Creek wines for quite a while. I've had their kind of value stuff, but I've never had their flagship wine. So I was interested in it. It's around um, $50, $60, somewhere around there in our market. And I thought it would be a nice comparison because it's got 35% Merlot and 34% Cabernet Franc, 28% um, Cabernet Sauvignon. So 
in terms of Cabernet uh, grapes, they have about 60%. So I thought this was quite a nice comparison because it's got 46% Merlot, 50% Cabernet Sauvignon. The Olivier is um, kind of in the right, the same price range when I bought it. It's around $60, somewhere around there. Um, so it's not, we're trying to compare apples to apples. Um, and then also it's got a rating, which is nice. I think it's a 92 point wine spectator ring so that we can kind of uh, have an idea of the quality in terms of the um, Hester Creek wine also. So um, I'm gonna now taste this with friends and then um, I'm gonna do the rest of this video. We're gonna see how they taste. Let's taste the wines. And I will let you know that I had them last night with some friends. Um, we paired it with a nice, beautiful prime rib. And so we drank it over uh, the night. I decanted it right before dinner and then we subsequently drank the bottles uh, for about two hours. I put them in the fridge overnight and now we are um, retasting them. These uh, samples have not been decanted, so they were just in the bottle, but um, they were an open bottle, so they should be nice and um, aerated. With the Judge, it is a very, very uh, nice bottle. It's very heavy, the bottle, so uh, it gives you a very good feel in terms of uh, substantial. So I like the whole design of the, the bottle. Let's smell it. On the smell, I do get that essence of Cabernet Franc, um, a little bit of greenness in it, um, herbs, uh, black plums, uh, a little bit peppery and spicy, which I do find in some of the BC wines, they get that black pepper um, aroma to it. So I do taste um, a lot of dark fruit, uh, some licorice, um, a little bit of mineraliness, black peppers, um, a slight kind of green vegetal component to it, um, particularly on the aftertaste, um, quite reminiscent of uh, Cabernet Franc. So I can see the presence of Cabernet Franc uh, grape varietal in this quite a bit as compared to the Chateau Olivier. Um, it's a nice wine and I'll let you know that when we first drank it, it was a little bit more vibrant in terms of the fruit and the Olivier was more restrained. But as the night wore on, I think um, the Olivier kind of smoothed out and mellowed quite a bit. Uh, so it was really funny because I think everyone preferred the um, judge on initial tasting. But through the course of the night, I think um, we turned and said, listen, maybe we prefer the Chateau Olivier after a couple of hours. So, and I would probably stand by the, that assessment at this point. This is a very nice wine. Um, lots of core fruit, uh, lots of intensity, slightly green on the aftertaste. And it's got some components that I personally don't really like, licorice uh, in, in, in particular. Uh, but it's a really well-made wine for a BC wine. I like it. Um, my rating of this would probably be 88 points. I'm just going to taste it one more time here. Yeah, solid effort. It is on the spicy side a little bit for my taste preference. So again, if you like that black peppery, spicy components to things, uh, you might like this. So uh, I'm quite minerally. So uh, nice wine. I really like it. Now let's turn our attention to the Chateau Olivier. This is very comparable in terms of the amount of Merlot. I think the judge has 35%, this has 40%. Uh, the rest of it is made up of Cabernet Sauvignon, whereas with the judge, it's half Cabernet Sauvignon, half Cabernet Franc. So on the color, I thought that the judge was a little bit darker color. It is uh, 2020 compared to 2018. And out of the bottle, it was quite restrained and I thought it was quite young. But again, as we got to um, drinking it along the meal after a couple of hours, it really mellowed out and softened quite a bit. So on the smell of this, you still get the core fruits, dark plums, blackberries, cassis, but uh, you don't get as much spiciness as with the um, judge. 
you get a little bit more toasty oak components to this. And you do get um, a little bit of a, almost a floral component to this. Um, like chamomile, something like that, like a floral component, which is kind of neat. Uh, a slight bit of mineraliness, but not as heavy as the judge's um, minerality, I think. Um, perhaps it's because I'm used to Bordeaux, but this is a much more Bordeaux-esque aftertaste. It's very clean. It doesn't have a lot of edginess to it. Not a lot of greenness. 18 was quite a nice vintage for Bordeaux. Um, you get the uh, mineraliness, a little bit of earthiness, dark fruit core. I actually like this in terms of the aftertaste. It's a little bit smoother. Um, uh, compared to the judge. The judge is very peppery, very spicy on the aftertaste. And again, that's just personal preference. That's not kind of my thing. Um, this one has a little bit more um, chocolatey notes to it, uh, tea leaves, that type of aromas and, and taste. And the fruit here is... Um, the judge's fruit is a little bit more um, bursting, uh, whereas this fruit is a little bit more refined, in my opinion. Um, it's still fresh uh, uh, fruits, dark berries, but it's a little bit not as bursting. Um, so it doesn't, it kind of reminds me a little bit more of old world compared to new world. Um, it doesn't have that boldness, but it kind of creeps up on you. It's a much more relaxing wine. Um, the judge, in my opinion, it kind of goes through this big, you know, it kind of hits you when you first drink it. And um, as you discover it, I think, um, you know, there are some elements that personally I'm not as crazy about, but like the spiciness comes through and the greenness comes through a little bit um, in the aftertaste. I think the aftertaste is a little bit shorter than the Olivier. The Olivier is much more restrained when you first open it, but as you drink it uh, with food, I think it gets a little bit um, mellower and more expressive and uh, more towards my palate. That's um, kind of experience with Bordeaux wines. It's very soft. It's very um, smooth in terms of its um, balance and its aftertaste. Um, it doesn't really have these kind of ups and downs that the, the judge has. So uh, that's just my own personal preference, but both are excellent wines. If for my palate, I would say the Olivier is a little bit more suited to my palate. I think it has a 92 point wine spectator rating. I would go probably about 90 points, but both of these wines are excellent. Um, at the price range, I think the Olivier is $62. The judge is $50. I think it's a fair price for both of these wines. Um, I think they show both. They both show well. I don't think anyone who buys these wines will be upset that they got them. I think they give good value, uh, but it's just uh, personal preference, and I don't doubt that some people will prefer the Judge to the Olivier. My palate is, uh, you know, drinks a lot more Bordeaux, so perhaps that's what I'm used to, and that's what I, uh, you know, of course, if I drink it, that must be not, that's what I like. So it's my first experience with Chateau Olivier. I like the wine. I think it's a very good quality, mid-tier, mid-priced wine. And I think it's a good showing for the Hester Creek, the judge. I mean, it's very comparable. This is a very, Chateau Olivier is a well, well respected wine. So for um, Hester Creek, the judge, to be able to kind of compare uh, and be on the same footing, that's, I think, quite good. So uh, I'm very encouraged by this wine. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy drinking.